One of the items that we'll find listed somewhere on the motorcycle is a little data table with pressures for tires. Who's that for exactly? If that bike, let's say a Yamaha R3, is sold all over the world in every climate imaginable, open to every size human on the planet who can ride it, what's that sticker mean? First thing about pressure for tires is climate. If you're living in Iceland, and there are some great motorcyclists in Iceland, I know because I've worked with a few, it's generally cold. And in summer, it gets warmer, but it doesn't get to temperatures that you would see in Doha at low sail circuit. Tire pressure should reflect where you live. Do you commute? If you commute all the time, then your tire pressure is gonna be derived on the data point of longevity. It may not, it may be derived on the point of comfort and absorbing all the expansion joints in the motorway or freeway that you ride on. So we've got to figure out what type of riding you do. We also have to figure out the weight of the bike and the rider. An R3 doesn't weigh a whole lot and generally the people that ride those bikes, generally, don't weigh a whole lot either. If the combined weight is quite low, the type of riding they do is fairly slow. Do they need high tire pressure? It's a good question to ask. How long do you ride for? Do you ride 30 minutes to work every day and 30 minutes home? Do you only ride on the weekends and you ride in bursts of about an hour? Do you ride on the weekends and ride 200 miles at a go? What's the length of the ride? Because the longer you ride, the more heat you're gonna generate in the tires. And then what's the actual speed you go through the corners at? So. One of the questions I often ask in countries like Australia and New Zealand is, if you see a sign that says 65 kilometers an hour for the corner, what are you going through with that? And don't lie to me, tell me the truth. And no ego. Oh, I'll do it at 85. Okay. Well, if you're going 20 miles an hour over the posted limit, how much is the tire being crushed with that extra cornering speed and cornering force. Tire pressure need, may need to be higher because you're going faster. So if your average climate is 40 to 70 Fahrenheit, that's pretty cool. If your average climate is 70 to 110 Fahrenheit, that's gonna be a totally different tire pressure than this one. If you're a very slow rider, then if you're going slow, you're not creating a lot of duress on the tire. So your pressure can go down and be lower. If you're faster, duress on the tires is high. So you're gonna go higher. So some very simple common sense or logical approach to tire pressure. Because if you see that listed on your bike, the most important part about that is who is it for? What climate? What type of riding? What's the com what bike was it tested on for that data to be true? How far did they ride on it? And what was the speed they were doing to come up with that? If that is a universal recommendation for every human on the planet, on most motorcycles made, does that make sense? It makes sense that you need somewhere to start from, but it doesn't make sense if you're making your motorcycle your own. Be the annoying seven-year-old. Why, 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 why? So when you get information like this, ask why is that number? What if your bike is a 2006 R1 Yamaha? If you are putting 2019 tires on that bike, is what's on the label for that bike, those tires are extinct. They might not exist anymore. If you see those numbers, are they appropriate for a 2019 tire? We are blessed with tires these days and have been for about the last 10 years. Tires have been amazing. There's also another 
historical perspective here based on the bike that you have and the tires that you are purchasing for it because these are our most consumed item, right? And maybe the tires you are buying come with a front and a rear recommendation. Oh really? Why? So at that point you can either accept what's on the bike in the documentation or on the sticker or you can go, you're buying new current tires, you can read up on that tire and see what the given pressure and pressure range from the manufacturer is before you buy the tire and put it on the bike. So at that point we've got a much clearer picture about the tire pressure that we might start with. Let's use a real world example of this and take all that ethereal stuff and bring it to here. So my bike is a 2007 Bandit 1250S. I'm going to install new tires on that motorcycle and they are going to be Pirelli Rosso 2 tires. It's going to be a 120 70 front and it's going to be a 190 55 rear. That's what I'm choosing. Now the sticker on my bike says 36 front, 42 rear. The tires that that bike came with don't exist anymore. So I am going to start over. So my first thing about this is, well, what pressures do I want? First question is bike plus rider weight. It's a lot. It's a big heavy bike. It's got three luggage boxes on it and I'm not light. So it's carrying a ton of weight. How do I ride? I ride relatively slow on the roads, so I will do 60 to 75 mph on average. That's my comfort zone in which I can relax and enjoy what I'm doing. Next thing, what is the climate? Well at this point we're getting into summer and we're starting to see higher temps and generally where I will ride the bike, the average temp in summer is going to be 70 Fahrenheit to 105 Fahrenheit. So it's going to be hot and generally my riding is going to be between 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. if I choose to go ride. That's my window of riding. We figured out all the variables we need to know now about getting that detached picture with this brand and that compound tires because they're being put on the bike now. Pressures. I'm not going to go off what the manual says and I'm not going to go off what the recommended pressure is by the manufacturer. I am going to test. I'm going to figure out what I want. How does that work? I'm going to start at 42 cold front and rear. It's hot. A cold pressure when by 9 a.m. it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit isn't a cold pressure. It is a summer pressure versus a winter or spring pressure where it's significantly colder, maybe by 40 degrees. So I'm going to start here with the cold pressure and then I'm going to go ride for about 40 minutes. That gets the suspension and the tires completely heated up and nice and hot. So everything's at optimum temperature. Now you might find if you check your pressure again when you've arrived at this place, depending on the temperature and the pace you rode, that you gained three. So all of a sudden now we are at 45, 45 hot. That's perfectly normal because the longer you ride, the more you heat up the air in the tire and the water vapor allows pressure to gain. So that's fine. So once I know this number, now I'm going to run a test protocol and I'm going to run 43, 43, 41, 41, 39, 39, and 37, 37. Same road, same speed, and I'm going to provide the greatest level of consistency I can. 
So all I'm testing here are these hot pressures. And I'm going to find on the roads I ride, the speed I ride at, the bike I own, with these tires that are brand new to me, that I've not ridden on this bike before, which pressure did I enjoy the most? So what does enjoy mean? Which pressure made me feel the most comfortable on my bike? Or which pressure gave me lots of information so I could be comfortable? Or which pressure took away a lot of the bumps in the road so I relaxed? Or which pressure made the bike flick side to side really easy but afterwards made it really hard to move it from side to side so it was too much work? There's lots of ways in which you can figure out what fun enjoyment means by doing this testing to find the pressure you need. The other side of that is, once you figure out, you know, I kind of liked, liked the bike best when it was there. Okay, so for your next ride, you can go ahead and set it at 42.42, arrive, reset at 43, and then just drop it to 41, and now you've got a very close test, and maybe you do it over two to three miles, so you can really get a very good understanding of what the bike's doing and how it feels before you make the pressure lower. Being consistent will get you great results. Getting the tire pressure right does a couple of things. So the higher pressure makes the tire keep its shape better under load. The more you lower the pressure, the bigger the contact patch gets. So if you want the bike to move side to side and you ride on roads where you're really agile, then higher pressure will give you more shape and the bike will be more flickable. If you want more contact patch because you're on the side of the tire and you have long sweeping bends where you live, well, maybe this type of deformation of the tire and a lot more grip is better for you. I don't know, but if you go through the testing protocol, you'll figure out with that tire in your environment, with your speed being consistent, what pressure will work for you given the season and the temperatures that you're in. Because we have such a huge array of single compound, two compound, three compound tires, all different heights, circumferences and profiles, the simplest thing we can do is actually find the pressure that works for us. And in the end, what that pressure does is put us on a continuum that is longevity and grip. And somewhere on that continuum, your credit card, your debit card, or your cash sits. What do you want? Higher pressure, better longevity. Lower pressure, more grip. With a little bit of testing, you can figure out exactly how to make the tires work best for your bike. And then once you've figured that out, based on the pressure and where you're at, then there's an expectation about why those tires will only last as long as they did, because paying for grip is the price of speed. Race tires last 150 miles, maybe, maybe, on a good day. How long do you want your road tires to last? 3,000 miles? 8,000 kilometers? What do you need? Well, part of that is centered here. So take the time to do the testing to find the pressure that works for you when answering the questions I posed earlier to give you that level of information. This is an example for the, uh, the tires that are going onto my bike now. I am gonna use a different brand next time and a different model because I can. And in doing that, I am gonna go through this test protocol and do exactly the same test irrespective of the brand of tire, the model of tire, the size of the tire, I am going to run this test. 